and SciArc and Historic Scotland began working together. And the way I found this out was Ben and David, um, I think I lost the slide there, let's see. Um, ben and David, came, David Mitchell from Historic Scotland came to Pixar and spoke in our theater right downstairs from my office. So I said, okay, I'm gonna go because I'm a representative of Brave and I'm, I wanted to see what they had done in Scotland. And um, as it turned out, they showed images like these. This is Rosslyn Chapel in Scotland. And we saw these in our Pixar theater and I was just blown away. I had no idea what was going on down the street in Oakland at SciArc. When I saw what they were doing in Scotland, I was really reminded of the crumbling churches and ruins in Armenia, ancient sites all falling into huge disrepair. Um, and then what should happen, but Ben shows this slide in his presentation, which looked awfully familiar to me. It is Ani, the Church of the Redeemer in Kars. I visited Armenia many times starting in 1991, and uh, my connection to the church and history began far earlier than that, and I was baptized in the Armenian church. Um, my father was Archpriest Father Mesrob Serafian of the Oakland Parish, and so he made sure we always knew our history and culture, you know, everything from going through the Sunday school to visiting Armenia. And I know it would make him really proud to know about the great work that's soon to be done in Armenia that we're going to be talking about today thanks to this partnership. So just, just to say it, there was a huge leap in technology in Armenia. Um, anyone been to Armenia? Come on. Okay, I've got one, two, I'll take it. Okay, more of you saw Brave, but it's okay. Um, so the uh, first time I went to Armenia was in 1991, and there was a, a fuel blockade at the time. Ar Armenia is landlocked, so, you know, fuel was not even really getting into the country. And I remember getting ready for a dinner, you know, in the dark by candlelight in my hotel, thinking like, so this is Armenia. Um, and uh, through the years, the, um, the influx of money, infrastructure, care, love, support from all over the world, Armenians everywhere, and from Armenia itself to bring it into a better place. It's been amazing, not least of which was the Simonian Educational Foundation making possible the TUMO Center. This is a reboot of technology right where it matters most with young people. Mary Lou's going to talk more about it, but it has charged the infrastructure and prepare, is preparing high school kids for um, the present and future. And on, so on the left is Armenia 1991, just a, just a typical block, and on the right is the inside of TUMO Center today. So um, after that talk at Pixar, I ran down to the front of the theater and I met with Ben, Jamie, and the SciArc team at their offices in Oakland afterward. Um, it's my hometown. It was just blocks away from Pixar. Again, I had no idea this was going on in my neighborhood, um, all in the Bay Area. This was an initial conversation to discuss what a program in Armenia could look like. We talked about which sites might be on a wish list to capture, and we talked about this question, why Armenian heritage? And we came up with this list. The Armenian diaspora, more Armenians are living outside Armenia than within the country. I mean, every time I meet in Armenia, I mean, I go to Armenia very often, and yet I meet Armenians every day. They're all over the world. Um, and really, are, many are never able to travel there and spend time there. Second, Armenian heritage uh, crosses modern straight state borders. You will find Armenian heritage all over the world. You will, find, um, you will find that a lot of Armenian heritage is no longer in Armenia, and we need to get to it. The, uh, we can create a free online virtual pilgrimage so that Armenians and non-Armenians around the world can learn about this culture and, and, and admire the beauty of it. And it's an opportunity to build technical capacity and engage students in preserving their own history, which is something that we have not been able to do before. Um, and then there's my personal favorite. Another thing that, that just occurred to me as we were looking at why Armenian heritage is for me, just given my upbringing, it's like this was an opportunity to save the churches, you know? And that's, again, that was my in to um, Armenia. The first time I went to Armenia, it wasn't that I wanted to go to Armenia. I wanted to see historic churches. And everybody had their own reason for going on their first trip, but that happened to have been mine. So I actually, coincidentally, had started working on the board of TUMO around the same time I started Brave. It took about six years to make Brave, almost seven. It took a long time to make TUMO, although TUMO was, <laughs> was ahead. TUMO finished sooner. Brave. <laughs> Slowly but surely, we make these movies. Um, and I will now introduce Mary Lou Papazian, Managing Director of TUMO, Center for Creative Technologies, and she will talk about what TUMO is. So, Catherine, Catherine was in Armenia in 91? Nin first time in 91. I went to Armenia in 97, my first time. Uh, I was born in Egypt, raised in Lebanon, moved to the U.S. Uh, in 97, 
And for the first time, I went and visited Armenia, and I fell in love. I was amazing, and I kept going until we finally, uh, my husband and I decided to move to Armenia. We'll celebrate our 10th anniversary in February, and I'm, I really can say I'm very proud and very satisfied to live there. There's so much to do every day that people ask me, uh, isn't it tough? Uh, I say in the contrary. Uh, the day passes like a minute. I have so much to do, and I still go back home, and I haven't finished everything, and I go back the next day and continue working. Has been, but I was very lucky because I met Sam Simonian, the founder of Tumo Center, and um, and then I met the board members, and uh, we started imagining this space. I'll show you a picture now. Uh, we started imagining the space when the building was still uh, under construction. Uh, I was also lucky to be the construction manager at the same time, and, and then the managing director. I have two backgrounds in construction management, and I did my master's in um, education and technology at Columbia University. So this was, for me, the amazing project I could be part of. Uh, this is back in 2006, uh, no, seven sometime, I, think, I don't know. I think it was six. Then. Six, seven. Uh, it was just the beginning. We were all dreaming about the space. Uh, we were thinking what we were going to do. And, uh, and everything slowly happened. Um, I want to come back to this slide. And we really believed, all of us, that young people have fundamental right to reach their full potential and a mastery of technology was the key part of that mission uh, in Armenia, and we want also to spread and make these things happen all over. So uh, in 2010, it was our big opening ceremony. We had more than 10,000 visitors, uh, and we opened the doors. What is TUMO? It's actually a huge space. It's about 3,000 square meters, like 10,000 feet, square feet. Uh, it's very modern. Um, it's a very open space where kids come after school for at least twice a week, two hours per day. Twice a week, they pick their own schedule. The, the center is completely free. Uh, we have more than 5,200 students enrolled and we follow them uh, one by one and we guide them throughout the process. So they can come starting at 12, when they're 12 year old, and they can stay as long as they want until they're 18, 19, or 20 year old. Um, in this space, we have, we have built uh, a system where we uh, complement a virtual world where we have a bunch of exercises with workshops and hands-on activities. So these stations were built specifically for the center. Uh, we call them two mobiles. It, it was a very nice design because uh, it was very important for us to imagine how a kid is sitting in front of a computer and what they would feel and how they will coordinate with each other and how they will direct their space. So every day we go and uh, change the directions of this, the distribution of the two mobiles, and then after two hours, everything is moved because you can move them around in a two meter diameter, and the kids put them the way they want, and they e they either face each other, they face opposite each other, they just look to towards the wall or to each other. It's it's amazing how they how they play with these um, stations. Um, we also have workshops. I, I need to go back to another slide to show you the space again. So the open space has all the two mobiles, and the peripheral wall, mm, spaces are the places where we run the workshops. And our architect was very clever to create a wall. He calls it the black wall. It's made of uh, glass and black wall. And it's, a lot, uh, it's very transparent. So when you're in the middle of the space, you can see everybody uh, working. You, you have a lot of transparency, and there is nothing hidden. Exactly the opposite of uh, the Soviet 
uh, school or the Soviet space where everything was about rooms and doors and double doors and double doors and hidden areas. So we created a space where the kids will feel very comfortable, they will feel very free, and they will move around the way they want. So when they come, they can pick whenever, wherever they want to, to sit, and they log on, and then they start working on their exercises. Um, so we have the bleachers area is where we have a lot of lectures, uh, a lot of uh, conferences there, and the uh, workshop spaces are the rooms where we run the workshops with teachers. This is a little bit the idea of the virtual world. Uh, it's an island where you have the activity. Every student has an avatar. Uh, when they come, there is an exercise to put your face in your avatar and the face turns. So you have to take pictures from all sides. And once you're part of this system, you can see all the others that are part of the same session and you can chat with them and then you can pick the exercises you want to do. Uh, you have a learning plan where you upload all the exercises you want to do, and once you have done them, you are entitled to go to a workshop. And the workshops have levels, beginner, intermediate, advanced, and project workshops. So I forgot to say that we specifically focus in uh, four areas, animation, digital media, web design, and game development. But at the same time, we have a bunch of skills which, are, uh, which goes from 3D design to 2D modeling to programming to communication to drawing to music uh, to a lot of other things that complement these four focus areas. And if you are a normal student, uh, you pick a focus area and you start uh, going deeper and deeper in that focus area until you get to the project level. If you are um, a very, like a genius type, you go very fast and you can do <laughs> kind of two majors. You can, you can do two things at the same time depending on the speed. The beauty of this program also is that you, it's self-paced. So if you are slow, you do it slowly. If you're fast, you, you can jump and you can do things really fast. This is uh, an example of how the exercise is done. Uh, it's a bunch of instruction in the Armenian and it has also the English version. Uh, it's uh, a lot of uh, steps that include videos, uh, concept uh, descriptions, questions and answers, and you can even upload your own work. And it has this thing called black boxes where you test your knowledge and you check if you, have, uh, under, you understand it correctly or not. Uh, the exercises are usually uh, exposure type and concept and tools type. In the exposure type, we expose them to the concepts, and then in the concept and the tools, we teach them how to use the tools, uh, like any software or any tool they will need in drawing or animation or game development. And the concepts, we go step by step through the concepts of the focus areas, and we teach them the fundamental concepts. The students, uh, see throughout their stay there, their progress. They have all the exercises on the top, they have points uh, which tell them where they have reached, and they have in all the skill areas, they can see how, how far they have gone. One thing that always the parents in Armenia ask us is, are they going to get a diploma? Or is there a certificate? Uh, we tell them no. Uh, this is not about uh, a certificate or a diploma. We give them something called a living diploma, which is their portfolio. From the first day that they're in, once they have uh, done their membership, they will, everything they do there is recorded. We keep the data of everything they have done, and the parents are exposed to this data from anywhere, from a website, from anywhere, they can read all the, and see what their kids have done and how good they have done and compare to others how they're doing. And also, the person itself can upload the best works that they have done throughout their stay and they can create their own portfolio. And we call it living portfolio because it evolves as you go and it changes throughout the time or the years that you're there. 
so this is an example of all the uh, history of a student in Armenian and in English. And here is a portfolio of a student showing, you can click on the work and it shows you what uh, they have done so far. This, these are pictures of workshops. Uh, one of the workshops we have done was uh, 101 Fundamental of uh, Computer Science and Programming. So instead of just doing a simple loop or things like that, we, we created a simulation of the Soviet fountain we have next to us, where we had renovated it and we had put more than 350 lights. So we created a simulation of the fountain lights and we asked them to create a, a light show for the uh, fountain. They used the simulation to understand how they're going to create the light show, and then they invited their parents to come and see the light show themselves and in real. So they worked with on a simulated system, and then they, they tested it on the real thing. This is another workshop uh, of robotics. Uh, we use Lego Mindstorm, and then we go even further with more developed software. So, uh, why SIAC? Armenia's teenagers, like their peers all over the world, need to be equipped for the challenges that face them today. They need to be prepared to embrace the future, but also they need to take charge of their past to fully own their heritage and cultural identity. This is a picture of Ani again. Uh, these are my kids. Uh, we went uh, to Ani twice. It's in Turkey. Uh, it's on our way. We went to Mount Ararat. We climbed Mount Ararat. And on our way back, we stopped at Ani. It's an amazing site. And I believe me, I can go like 1,000 times there, and I will never be satisfied. It's, it, it's called the 1,000. Uh, city of 1,000 churches, uh, and it's um, it's an amazing site where there there are so many things to discover. Uh, so those this is on our way back from Turkey, and this is Gerard, uh, the first site that we're going to do is Sayak. You can see the beauty of this church. It's carved in stone. This is in Armenia. It's very close to us. It's like 40 minutes away from Yerevan, the capital. Um, so we, we picked Kerart because Kerart is an amazing example of Armenian architecture uh, carved in rock, uh, has an amazing acoustics inside. Uh, it's still uh, it's still used. There are a lot of weddings uh, that uh, are done there, weddings, baptism, um, and um, and and you don't have any electricity or lighting inside, so it's natural lighting. Uh, so why are we partnering with Sayak? Uh, I think this partnership is going to be the beginning of an amazing experience and an amazing. Uh, challenge to us, to all of us, uh, because it is going to complete our vision together with SIARC. It will mobilize technology, state-of-the-art technology with the 3D laser scanner. It will empower young people to literally capture their historical legacy, like Gerhard, like Ani, and it will show that legacy can be safeguarded and transitioned into the future. And the fundamental lessons that two more students will learn by participating in this and later leading many, many other, uh, many, many other experiences also and capturing our heritage, this will be the process, a long process, but I'm sure that it's going to be priceless and an amazing experience for all of us. Thank you. This is actually, this is Gerhard from outside. Uh, the back part is all carved in rocks. So when Marilu says carved in stone, we don't mean carved of stone. We mean literally yes. they dug into the rock wall and made a church inside it. And this was one of the first trip I, actually every trip to Armenia I've made, I've always visited Gerhard. 
First, because it's about 40 minutes from Yerevan, so you can get there easily. Yeah. Um, and second, because it is, um, it, it's absolutely magnificent. And, you know, it's just, you know, it's, it's an operating church. There's a lot going on. I remember, you know, in 1991, as a teenager, watching this lamb being slaughtered in front of me, and then the, the blood was taken and put on my forehead in a cross. I was like, what's happening? You know, this is, um, there was, just, you know, it was, there were baptisms, there were, you know, sacrifices, <laughs> so much was happening. Um, <laughs> there were weddings, <laughs> but it's a fully operating church, and um, you can, you have to go, because you can also buy really good bread right outside. Yes. Um, and uh, it's, it's carved right in, and you can kind of explore all the nooks and crannies in, in the rock wall. There are little caves, and they're, they're small chapels with candlelight and, and wax drippings and, and prayer, and it's a fantastic place and to sing. Khachkars. Khachkars everywhere, and I think um, you'll be hearing more about Khachkars, I think, during this visit to Washington, D.C. So it's, it's a great place to start. Um, I think it's meaningful to anyone who's visited Armenia, and, Armenia's, and, and actually anyone, Armenian or non-Armenian, who visits Armenia, most people stop at Gerard. It's a great place to start, and I think the students will get something very interesting there. Thank you so much for your attention, your time today, and for coming. Thank you.